the wacky world of Multimedia J. It's not even Thanksgiving yet, and we've got 50 mile an hour winds, 20 degrees out with wind chills in the single digits. Uh, dear Canada, please keep your air to yourself. That is all. Okay, now that that's dealt with, if you hear any weird noises, like stuff getting blown around outside in this video, you'll know what exactly is going on here. Anywho, I've cleared off the table. We will revisit the whole Delosaurus thing a little later on, but for now there's something else I wanted to talk about. So a while back, I did a video on this very same table, which the camera now has having a hard time focusing on because there's nothing to look at. I did a uh, video a while back about the worst work shoes ever. For those that don't remember, it kind of went like this. Basically, to make a long story short, I had some crappy Walmart steel toes to tide me over until some real brand steel toes came in, and the Wolverines that I ordered were in such shoddy condition that I thought that the third party reseller had been duped with some counterfeit merchandise. The shoes were cut so far forward that they were like steel-toed sandals and it was real easy to walk out of them, not good for safety shoes. Plus the supposed shoe rubber on the bottom was more like cheap plastic. And overall it was just horrible compared to the last pair of Wolverine shoes that I'd gotten that were soft toe, so I wound up sending those back and getting the cat footwear shoes that you're going to see in this video. Now I'd seen some documentaries about counterfeit merchandise and how just about anything that can be faked these days is getting faked. Even things like work boots, military parts, even fake Viagra has been found in some not so uh, reputable or shady or whatever circles of the world of commerce and stuff like that. There's documentaries out there on counterfeit goods and the problems that they cause in our society. Go find them and watch them if you want to see, hear more on this topic, but I, just the, the shoddy quality of these shoes just screamed something was very, very wrong. And what I received on that day was most certainly not what I spent for them, not even close. As a result of that day, not only did I switch from Wolverine shoes being my favorite work shoe to cat footwear shoes being my favorite work shoe, but I decided to never again go to like third party shoe sellers of any sort and I would just order things directly from the manufacturer or through some place like Amazon or something like that. But basically, my days of going to shoe sites were over. The shoe brands that I have preferred for work and casual shoes all sold directly online. There was no reason for me to take the risk of something like this happening again, so I didn't. And I haven't looked back. Well, a lot has happened since that little debacle, and since then I've gone from the worst work shoes ever to what I can safely call the best work shoes ever. Because I have found a pair of work shoes, it's probably the best that I've ever owned. How do I know that? Is buying three pairs of them a good enough reason? <laughs> No, I'm not made of money. I didn't go on a giant shopping spree, and I didn't buy these all at once, obviously. These purchases were spread out over the span of about a year, actually. Yeah, about a year. Actually, uh, yeah, 2012. About a year or so. So, at the warehouse fiasco, we had to wear steel toes. And we had to wear some steel-toed shoes. And uh, I started out with a pair of $30 crap Walmart stuff, whatever you Brahma, I think, that didn't make it past like a month before they really started showing some serious wear. So I figured I'd get some real brand stuff. I ordered the Wolverine Durashocks, which were part of that whole fiasco with the, uh, with the shoes. I really think those shoes were, were counterfeits. I mean, uh, not to knock Wolverine or the, the reseller that sold me those shoes. I think uh, either the reseller was duped or they were trying to dupe me or something, but... Yeah, that, that was a mess unto itself. But since then, I initially bought this first pair right here. I initially bought over a year ago in, I think, September of 2012. So they're actually still quite wearable. The only reason I replaced them is so that they could be my backup pair and not the Walmart crap. These I bought a few months ago, and they've taken a few dings since then from pallets and boxes and things like that, or having to kneel wearing steel toes isn't really good. And now we got these. These are, these are basically the soft-toed versions 
of these that I'll be wearing at the new job in case we have an all hands on deck situation and I wind up having to do some warehouse floor work, even though I'm pretty much a database guy at this point. So these are Caterpillar Ridgemont style work shoes. Yeah, cat footwear. Same company that makes the Caterpillar construction equipment. Incredibly well built shoes with Goodyear rubber for the soles and stuff like that. So I figured why don't we go through these and just see why exactly I'm such a huge fan of them in the first place, beginning with the first pair of these things that I bought last year. Once again, I'm glad I don't eat off this table. <laughs> so this is one of these things. Now, this is the interesting part because a lot of the or a lot of review type videos that talk about consumer products will review new products. But here are a pair of Ridgemonts from Cat Footwear after about a year of regular use. These were my work shoes. I did not alternate between these and another pair because the only other pair I had was the uh, were the crappy Walmart shoes. So I've since replaced them with uh, I've since replace them with like Rite Aid laces or something. They basically, uh, no, they're not Rite Aid laces, but I, I went I went down and picked them up at a pharmacy, but these are basically the, uh, basically like replacement shoelaces, and because they're way too long, I double laced them, but uh, yeah, so steel toes, obviously, still in one piece after a year or so. There's a little, there's some ding marks, but I have gone over this with some scuff cover and shoe polish and shined these up one last time before getting rid of them, but you know, it's mostly, you know, the, the things I read about these things, what I read about these things online is that they will wear out everywhere but the bottom first. <laughs> so you'll wear through the heel, you'll wear through the sole or something like that. And uh, so I stuffed some stuff in there. I don't know why. I don't think I need to do so. Of course, yeah, insoles. I got a special insole setup that I use for these. I do not use the soles that come with the... Uh, I did not use the soles that come with the shoe. But, so after a year or so of heavy, heavy use, these things are doing far better than any of the uh, than any sneakers that I ever wore in a warehouse. So, you know, I had to get these because the place at a, at the warehouse fiasco required steel toes. But before that whole mess happened, I was wearing sneakers in these places, and if it was crappy Walmart stuff, I'd get three months tops out of them before they were useless. If I bought real brand shoes like New Balance or something, I'd get a year out of them tops before the concrete would destroy the treads and I'd nearly fall down in the workplace. These things have had none of those problems. Look at all that tread that's still there. Yeah, the little fine stuff underneath is worn away, but this is still very much a usable tread after a year of heavy use. As far as wear in the back, because I'm a man on a mission when I walk, so I tend to wear out the heels of these things, it's almost bad enough for me to have to use duct tape. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I couldn't, it's not like the whole back of the shoe came off and was rubbing against my foot or anything like that. So that's what these are like after a year or so. Let's take a look at the other one. Similar condition, of course, and things like that. And these are going to be, next time I have a job that requires steel toes, these are going to be my backup pair. Now let's get my main pair of steel toes that I finished the warehouse fiasco with, and that will be my go-to shoes next time I have a job that requires steel toes. So these are a bit closer to new. I just wore these last Friday, actually, because I do have a set of, so I do still have the soft-toed Wolverine Durashocks that I could wear, but these things, it's funny too, because of all the treads on the bottom and all the, uh, and the insoles that I've got these things hooked up with, because of the treads on the bottom and stuff like that and all this other stuff, these are actually more comfortable to wear than my soft-toed shoes are. So I've been wearing steel toes to program computers all day, which I know has looked stupid uh, at this new job, which I know has looked stupid, so I want to downgrade to soft toe shoes so I don't look like absolute overkill in the shoe department. But it's crazy. I mean, I, these things have been more comfortable than sneakers. And one of the things about wearing steel-toed shoes that you don't need is that they're heavy. So in terms of like fitness and burning calories and stuff, if you can get used to zipping around in these, as I have, because my nickname at the warehouse fiasco job was Mr. Energy, if you can get used to wearing steel toes as like casual shoes, you're going to burn more calories per step because they're the equivalent of having a five pound weight on your foot all the time. So... <laughs> <laughs> these are only a couple months old. They still have the original laces, and I had just gotten these so um, I could have these other ones as a backup pair in case anything adverse happened to these, which I didn't expect, but uh, 
Let me look inside these things, and uh, they're not stuffed. I gotta stuff some stuff in them. Probably the stuffing from the new shoes are gonna, or from the new shoes that I just got. They're soft toe. Are gonna go in here. I don't know why you'd want to stuff a. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to stuff a steel toed shoe. Maybe the fabric droops down from the, from the top if it sits too long. But they still have the original laces and far better condition. You can still see on the bottom some of the smaller treads are still intact, and you can still read Goodyear welted construction. <laughs> Uh, it's just on the side. Extended wear rubber outsole. <laughs> Oil resistance and all that lovely stuff. Not bad if I do say so myself. So, what am I going to be replacing these with? Ladies and gentlemen, the soft-toed version of these shoes. I guess this technically counts as an unboxing video of sorts because we're taking these out of the box for the first time. Uh, what do we got? side win a free pair ooh go online and fill out a survey for a chance to win a free pair I don't can they give me another one of these things yeah, so all right so nothing exciting really uh, these are the soft toed versions of these but now you get to see what these things look like brand new as I take them out of the bumblebee box here <laughs> and I set up the insoles and everything black and yellow good colors for industrial type stuff yeah here they are brand new I haven't even worn them yet I did a little double take there I thought they were both like two right feet or something I mean, that'd be an interesting gaff uh, it does kind of look wait a minute <laughs> okay look at the bottom yeah check the bottoms yeah, it's just the way they shipped made it look like they were both the same for the same foot. <laughs> All right, so weight-wise, a little bit lighter, but these things are built so tough that uh, they do feel lighter, but they're not going to be as light as a pair of sneakers or even composite toe shoes. So here we are, Ridgemont's brand new Caterpillar little bulldozer thing on it, black and yellow on the bottom, and here's where the treads look like brand new with zero wear on them, even the ones on the edge. Look all nice and stuff. So why on earth am I wearing these when I don't even need those types, of, these types of shoes anymore? Well, quite frankly, they are, quite frankly, like I said, best work shoes ever. And in an all-hands-on-deck situation where everybody's helping out in the warehouse with work on the floor, these would be what I'd want to wear. They're hands down the most comfortable work shoes I've ever worn. Even the Wolverine Dura Shocks haven't been as comfortable. So actually what I'm going to do, besides show you the shoes, of course, which I think these got a little bit smushed in, in shipping, which is why they look like two shoes for the same foot, I'm going to set up the insoles that I use for these, and then let's uh, take them for a test walk or something like that. Okay, first order of business. Waste not, want not. We'll use the stuffing, if I can get it out of here. Can I do this with one hand? Nope. Um... There, so you don't have to stare at the shoe. I think it was catching on the shoelace inside. We'll use the stuffing. We'll use the stuffing from the new shoes to stuff the old shoes. It's not going to fit very well, though. All right, so let's try putting the shoelace out of the way. And so I think these things are these things are definitely very well stuffed. They're soft toes too, too, so it's a little bit harder to get the stuffing out. First things first. Stuff these in there, all nice and good, and out of commission. At least until the next time I require steel toes. Now, interestingly enough, the insoles in these things, what I usually do with these shoes is I almost never wear the factory soles. Is I almost never, I, of course I have three of these things now, so maybe I should wear them <laughs> just to use them up. I only need one of these. So I'm gonna go get some, I'm gonna go get the pair of these that came from the steel toes. Now what I usually do with these things is immediately when I get work shoes, the factory insoles come out and these things serve as the cutting guide for the replacement insoles that I'm going to put in here. So these things will serve as the cutting guide for the replacement insoles, usually like Dr. Scholl's or something like that. I thought it was zoomed in for a second there. Because what's the problem that you have with insoles? Trying to cut them so that they'll fit correctly. If, you, if they're still too long, they bunch up and they give you blisters on your toes. If they're too short, uh, they slide around inside the shoe and you get blisters on your toes. So uh, obviously this needs to be done correctly. What we got here with this little chain on here. Yeah, just more marketing material. Hey, you bought some nice shoes in multiple languages or something like that. I don't, I don't really care about that stuff. The shoes are awesome. 
on the inside you can see the stitching in there, especially around the toe and stuff like that. Uh, too bad that part wears out first, right? All right, let's get the insoles that we're going to be using. Although I think I might modify things just a little bit because I now have three pairs of these things and I absolutely need to use them up. So I think I'm going to, if these are the same size as the ones from the steel toes, I'm probably going to use these for my top insoles. Okay, first order of business, though I'm sure this is completely unnecessary. These are the insoles that came out of the soft-toed shoes, and these are the insoles that came out of the steel-toed shoes. Let me guess. They're pretty much the same size. How'd I guess? Sweet. Well, since I have three pairs of these things, what I think I'll do is I'll put them in my shoes that are not for work, that I wear on a more casual basis, just to wear them out. I mean, yeah, it'll look weird having cat insoles inside like Wolverine shoes or even New Balance shoes, but I got to use these things up. Yeah, I got another pair too that I'll probably put in a pair of sneakers uh, that I don't really wear a lot of, but just to use them up. Okay, so we're going to use these as the cutting guide to put the insoles in these things. So what insole configuration do I use for these kinds of jobs where you have to stand up all day and stuff? If this chair will stop popping. <sighs> Now, as we all know, insoles come in one of two varieties. You have the Dr. Scholl's flat clothing knockoff type things. And these are the Rite Aid knockoffs, obviously. I just stopped by, picked them up. They were on sale that week. So you got those Odor Eater knockoffs, the little cloth things that go inside your shoe. And then you have the gel and ergonomic type doodads like these. Uh, these are the Dr. Scholl's extra support for big and tall men work insoles. Now, I'm not exactly, I wouldn't exactly qualify as a big and tall man anymore because I've lost 55 pounds flying around the warehouse fiasco and uh, losing all that weight and getting in shape and all that good stuff getting hooked on exercise so that I've been keeping the weight off even after leaving that kind of environment <laughs> actually I'm about to uh, drop another belt notch so uh, yeah good stuff anyways so orange the orange part of this is hard plastic and uh, these are basically work insoles that are nice and clothy nice and clothy you just, uh, nice and clothy with gel on the bottom now when I first started messing around with custom insole setups, I first want, I was like, you know what, you know, I like gel insoles. Let's put a gel insole underneath this thing. You don't want to do that. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because we're talking rubber here, which isn't as good, which isn't anywhere near as breathable when it comes to liquid. So what happens if you use gel insoles is you end up with something like this after a couple of months. Ew. Gross! I can finally throw that thing out now. I'd been saving it to shoot to a show in a video like this, but yeah, gross. Absolutely disgusting. I'd rather have cloth bits in the bottom of my shoes than that. Now, and it makes your shoes stink too because mold is stinky. Yeah, disgusting, man. So here's what we're gonna do. So what I do is I have the cloth thing on the bottom and it's more breathable, so if there's any moisture issues, it'll be less of an issue. And then we have these. Now these come in two thicknesses. You have single thickness and double thickness. I'm starting with single thickness because these are new and they're not broken in yet. But when they get broken in and they start feeling a little cavernous, I will upgrade to a double thick underneath and then that will be what works. And I will be able to fly around on hard concrete floors for hours on end without pain in my feet, pain in my heels, pain in my knees, nothing. I might as well have been running around in the grass in sneakers. That's how that's how good this worked for me. So it's time to set these up. And of course, the default insoles that come with the shoes are <laughs> default. Here I'm using my computer language again. The insoles that come with the shoes will serve as the cutting guide to cut these right the first time and not have them be too long or too short. And for that, I'm going to need a tripod. So I'm going to go find one and we'll pick up right where we left off to set those up to where to work tomorrow. Okay, this is gonna be a little weird because I'm not used to doing these with a tripod in front of me, so I gotta lean the way forward. Okay, first the uh, Rite Aid knockoffs of the odor eaters. Single width. The interesting part about these, the interesting part about these things is that they there is that this style of uh, this style of insole is actually almost the right size already for the shoe size that I have going here. So, we're not going to have to do very much in terms of trimming. Alright, so, yeah, see, uh, just, uh, just put this in like this. 
And this is why I do what I do here. And this is right here is why I do what I do. You just put this in, basically put it in the bottom. Uh, it's better for these to be a little bit too long than a little bit too short. If we go to the end, we can see there's only a tiny bit that needs to be snipped off. And it doesn't matter as much if this fits or not because this is going to be covered up anyway. So you just take the edge off so it doesn't bunch up in the front and cause any issues. And uh, this is ready to go in. I think, th I think the thing with this shoe, this shoe in particular seems to have gotten smushed a little in shipping. So that's why it looked like a shoe that goes on the other foot. How many times have I said that by now? <laughs> All right, it's a little bit of an issue. Uh, plus, I'm, oh, this is going to be hard on my back, <laughs> leaning way forward like this. But you know, you put this in. I'm going to put this in, and of course I'm not going to wear just these. I mean, these wouldn't be anywhere near enough for even a guy like me who's lost 55 pounds. Yeah, I still would be, I still would have pain if I wore only these. So these basically, these basically replace the, if these were like sneakers or something, these would replace stuff in the bottom. They're more breathable and they're supposed to combat foot odor, so these should work a little bit better. These should work a little better. And I'm not interested in getting them too perfect. <laughs> Not interested in getting them too perfect because gravity will do that for me once I'm walking around in these. It all kind of works itself out. Okay, the one on the right foot now. Yeah, I know this isn't really techy, but uh, in terms of blog type stuff, I mean, come on. You know, those of you who might be complaining, oh, this isn't tech related or anything, but come on, come on. I mean, B Bishop PCM just did a video about his bathtub that was leaking, so, and, uh, I've seen V West Life take a break from really geeky stuff from time to time too, so uh, wouldn't be completely unprecedented on YouTube. So you snip that off. These are the oof with the camera here, and uh, okay, so these are the easier ones. And uh, let's get this over here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get this jammed in there. Might have to move that out of the way a bit. Yeah, these definitely got a little bit crushed. They don't look. You know, maybe gravity will fix them. Maybe gravity will fix them once I've broken them in a little. Yeah, no. yeah. Let's see. Just oh no, there's a bumpy spot on the end. There's a look and feel aspect to this as well, but largely this part of it is just about getting it flat. Because if you have any parts that are sticking up, you're going to feel them every time you walk, and it's going to cause problems for you, maybe even blisters. Okay, those are in. Now the harder ones, the harder ones, because you have this these stupid blister packs that you need to be Superman to get open. Ugh. I've actually given myself some serious cuts before trying to get these plastic things open. Let's get these out. Toss the packaging aside and toss that out later. So what we're talking about here is this is hard plastic, like I said, with gel and other stuff underneath. Now these are going to be, these are usually too big and they have to be sized up and cut down to size. So I need to do that, make sure it's flat on the end and then turn it over. There is what needs to be snipped. And I'm going to do this off camera because I want to get this perfect. So, all right. So if this doesn't fit perfectly when I get this area, it's kind of lined up a little better now. If this doesn't fit perfectly, though, I'm going to cut it again. So I'm going to take the shoe. I'm actually going to take the shoe this time and do it off camera. Now for these, it's a little bit tricky because there's one part that flexes and the other that doesn't. So you may have to do this to get it into the shoe. And you may even have to take the laces off to get this to fit properly. I think I cut off a little too much. If it bugs me, then I'll I'll replace it. That's usually the way it goes. All right, let's get this one done. Okay, there it is. It doesn't look all that great, but the big question is how it feels. All right. Actually, uh, before I cut that off, test. Time to go for a test walk. Yep. I think we got ourselves a pair of shoes here. I think these fit well enough enough that I can snip this thing off. All right, time to snip the old chain. These things are now officially not returnable. I think. Supposedly, it's supposed. To be, I think the return policy is no signs of wear and stuff. All right, let's get these laced up. I got some laundry waiting to be switched out. So what a perfect way to take these things for an, a test walk besides just a few steps in the room. I'd say that these things are definitely ready. These will be my go-to shoes now for jobs in industrial type environments where steel toes are not required. For Pete's sake, I am done wearing sneakers in warehouses. It was no fun having shoes wear out in anywhere from three months to a year if I was lucky, depending on the quality. Anyways, before I call it a video, 
One last thing that I want, I know some of you folks are probably curious about, because I brought it up within the course of this best work shoes ever, shoe palo work shoe palooza, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Here's what's left of the crappy Walmart steel toes that I started the job at the warehouse fiasco with. This is after about two months. Oh yeah, look at how hideous that is. <laughs> a little bit of mold left over. Look at how awful that looks. Just look. That is disgusting. The steel toes are still in one piece. But I had to get these because uh, the, the folks at the staffing agency were like, we need you to, we can't give you time to get used to night shift again. You need to start pronto. And uh, you're not going to get a chance if you don't start. So there I was, days to nights, cold turkey, running entirely off of caffeine that first night, and having to go out to make an emergency trip to Walmart on my way to my first night at the DC to pick these up and put them on and wear them with the stock insoles and put wear and tear on those for when I tried to get real insoles later. Oh, it was a mess. And like most of the crap that I've bought from Wally World in terms of shoes, like the Dr. Scholl shoes that I could, couldn't get more than three months out of <laughs> when, when I tried wearing those sneakers in the warehouse. Look at these things. Yeah, I, I really think I should just throw them out. I don't think anybody could have any use for them. First, look at these. Look at this horrendous excuse for treads. These would have been bowling shoes very, very quickly. There wasn't as much padding in the bottom, obviously, compared to these, which have all of that. These have, and it's harder, harder, harder rubber too. But the reason why I wound up getting rid of them was because after about two months, this shoe had this habit to it. Yes, that is glue that I actually applied to this shoe to make them last until the Wolverines came in. Until the Wolverines came in, and then when I had to send the Wolverines back, make them last until the cat footwear shoes came in. Believe me, this was a real, this was a real mess because you weren't allowed inside the building if you didn't have steel toes, so... <laughs> and some folks were looking at me funny when they saw my glued-together shoes, but this is after two months, and let's look at it from the other side here, if you, if you can see that or not. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you, know, you can see down there. It was tearing apart, and I only made these last until the cat shoes came in, thanks to the miracles of household welder glue. Which isn't really used in welding, but that's what it's called. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like rubber cement type stuff, or I don't know what you want to call it. It's not hot glue, it's cold glue, but yeah. I was gluing these things after two months. You'd think that because they're steel toes, they might last longer than the Walmart brand sneakers, but no. I can finally throw these out, thank goodness. Because I've got more than enough steel toes to wear at jobs that require them. And for jobs that don't, there's these. Okay, it's enough shoe stuff for now. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.